Nasty sight. Tech nine still That's an the amazing bomb, shot the from Nico. Oh. How does he keep hitting those? They're gonna throw it up. Respect to Hunter. That would enable the plan. Nico though is not missing much. Vision or otherwise. He's posted up to catch next. So and he does hit it. God, he's looking deadly. Hunter's in trouble. Oh, and Nico yeah. hits everything. Back. This time we're looking at Nico uh, against Astralis. This is at the Blast tournament that just happened last weekend. Nico has a fantastic map, so I figured, you know, I haven't done a demo review of him recently, so why not grab it and see what it looks like? I did something a little different this review as well. I put on Nico's view model and his crosshair. I got it from prosettings.net. I thought about doing the resolution match as well, but honestly, CSGO looks bad enough as it is. I decided, you know, keep it at 1440p for the purposes of not making it look too garbage. They have this really ambitious plan this round. You can see they took long control with four guys. They're all Glocks, so they, they might actually just be using this time to come up with strats or whatever, but they might be hoping that showing four long causes Astralis to move around the map a little bit and maybe they'll try and flank, but... Of course, that never happens. It's not going to happen against Astralis. Um, or they might just be using the time. You can see they almost used up the whole round timer. They could just be using that time to talk about their gun round next round, which is totally normal in CSGO as well. All right, here's the first gun round. You can see that Astralis has got a guy pushed up long. They've got another guy there helping him at long. And G2 have maybe some distraction running at long. And it's really helped pull those three CTs far away from mid. And Nico and his teammate Hunter have been totally silent. And they, they don't throw the normal mid smoke. He comes through mid to throw the smoke like this. As soon as he throws it, it pops, right? It's not going to rattle around and bounce off walls. Like when you bounce it off the walls, you're kind of giving away that you're about to smoke it. And lets them call for a rotate a little bit earlier. But instead, they're able to totally isolate these two guys on B and do a perfect split. And two guys on B are never going to be able to hold a five-man split or very rarely going to be able to hold a five-man split you really need at least somebody in CT spawn maybe spamming through or just throwing flashes through the smoke just something to slow down the uh, the B split and I didn't even know that you could survive a bomb from here apparently you can he stays there with his cousin Hunter they both have 100 HP and yeah, they survive. I had no idea you could stay there. Next round with Nico, you can see it's kind of a dirty buy from Astralis, but their AUG and M4 player, Glaive and Dupree, are going to push mid. And you got to wake up earlier in the morning than that to sneak one over on Nico. His teammate probably pushed or probably spotted these guys pushing mid anyways. And Nico just deletes them. They, they were full buy, they had full nades, and they chose to push mid. I was kind of surprised by that, to be honest. Their, their buy wasn't that bad to to uh, justify a call like that. Maybe they were just trying to get something going early game, you know, take a chance, or maybe they had a read on something from a demo that maybe G2 isn't religious with watching mid. Anyways, it did not work out for them this round, and Nico just absolutely smokes them. I always liked watching Nico for his crosshair placement. As funny as that sounds, I actually have a, a clip later where all he does is walk around the map without getting a single kill, but his cro at every peak he takes and his crosshair placement moving through the map is always like perfect. He'll peek totally, like when he's clearing angles, he peeks everything with conviction like this. He's always got the perfect crosshair placement and when he peeks, it's always ready to go. Like he never peeks and kind of gets surprised, you know, like you weren't paying real attention to that sort of thing. When he turns a corner, he is ready to rock. All right, this is actually the round where he doesn't kill anybody from now on. But I put it in just to show how he takes the site. Um, throws a little smoke here to get just to create some space on catwalk. But watch how he goes in. He's kind of entering in. I think he's the second one in. Throws an absolutely terrible molly, but he was like half blind. 
But the way, also, this guy is nearly impossible to blind. The the number of flashes that he turns from, and they're just perfect turns. He'll and he spots them so quickly. It's not even off of audio cues, you know. Like it's easy enough to hear the audio cue if a flash bounces off the wall and then you turn. But there's some flashes later too. I actually put them in slow motion just to see. It's unreal how fast he reacts. I wanted to show his crosshair placement here actually. Like every peak is good. He's ready to go. He's clearing every single angle. And like that spin around there, he's clearing this, he does a full 180 swipe and he's almost dead set on the blue bin. He's just a couple pixels off the blue bin doing a 180 degree swipe. Like to be that accurate moving around, like moving your mouse around, it's just, it's just crazy. And I know he didn't shoot anybody, anybody, but like to do a full 180 swipe and you line up exactly where you want to be, like that's, that's pretty crazy. That's really, really good. This next round here, he's going to take long, and he's taking it by himself, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, it's a, another really dirty bye-bye Astralis. They did like a half save the last round. They got a couple scouts, but Nico scares Device off the corner just by himself. And I, I just wanted to show, like, I don't think this is good positioning on an anti-eco for you to go long by yourself and kind of get isolated out on an island. Yet, Like, yeah, I get your teammate probably flashed you out at long, but... That's really strange to have your anti eco strat be send Nico out alone at long. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't seem that smart. Like, yeah, he's got his teammates coming now, but earlier he was alone and his teammates were pretty far away. He easily could have been overwhelmed on his way going to the blue box. But what do I know? I guess. <laughs> Anyways, they're in this three v five, but Amnet gets a pick with the op. Gets it a lot closer, but they're able to get that AK back, so you just saw Dupree grab that gun. Nico gets another kill there, but they end up losing the round here. Like most games on Dust 2, there's a million battles at long, and this game is no different. So they're going to four-man take long with Nico third man in, throwing the flashes for his teammates. And I just wanted to show, look how much chaos is going on here. And he's still very focused, and the crosshair isn't spazzing around. Super nice turn from that flashbang. And he gets three while, while they're taking control along. I'm going to actually show that again full speed. Watch how fast he turns from this flashbang that comes flying in. And I don't I don't think it went off a wall or anything. It was, it was just a straight flashbang and he somehow saw it in the air while it was coming in. And just instantly turns, turns right back, starts fighting. It's very, very difficult to be in that position that Nico was in and get out of there without being blinded or without having your crosshair kind of in no man's land and not being effective with it. But uh, he was able to do it anyways, and I, I thought it was a really nice long take. Nico pretty much carrying his team through it, to be honest. Um, I was just impressed that he was able to do all that and not get blinded. You know, it's not like Astralis is throwing bad flashes. It's not like they don't know how to flash out along, but Nico's able to stay engaged in the round just by not being blind. And then he late round, opens, being late round like this, you're opening up so many lanes in the map that... Um, Astralis just can't cover them all, right? So they're just way more susceptible to flanks like that, and Nico finds an opening. All right, you do not want to miss this round. Nico just dunks on Astralis this round. You can see they're setting up. It's a five-man out long, which is a little weird, but all right, you do you, G2. You know, you do you. Uh, Nico's going to throw the smoke, like the, the deep uh, ramp smoke that falls, like, right outside CT spawn. Then he's going to throw the molly for Cat, so... Uh, Astralis can't hold position right at Cat. His teammates, they get pop flash. You can see they were blind. Then he throws out a pop flash for them, but they kind of get messed up. Nico is going to come save the day here and check out these eagle eyes on Nico's spot device there. It must have been just a couple pixels showing of device obscured by the flames, but Nico spots it and obviously deletes him. Headshot again. That's all this guy hits. He, th he shoots the wall there just to get uh, Astralis to look at the wall before the pop flash comes through. So he shoots, gets the pop flash to come in. Hopefully they see it. So he just tap, 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 baby. Takes out Glaive and wins the round. It's a bit of a weird one. Astralis gamble stacks at A. Unfortunately for Nico, he's kind of the guy coming in here running decoy. Watch him just peek this sliver on the guy in the cubby here and just boop, right in the head. Pop, just a sliver. Nice. I'm surprised he didn't tap that guy right after. That seems like the exact type of fight that Nico likes to take. Gets overwhelmed, but he holds the CTs there. His teammates have the free bomb set at B and they go on to win the round, of course. Last round of the half and Nico is ready to go absolutely full scumbag mode. 
Gets the auto sniper and he's just spamming at the door and scumbag status achieved. Gets the kill through the smoke. Switches back over to the AK and you can see G2's having a really good game here against Astralis. Uh, Nico was just recently signed by G2 right at the end of 2020 and, and uh, the hype level was pretty real. Like people thought he was going to maybe turn them into major contenders and maybe that's true. Like the thing is Astralis exists and you could say there's a bunch of other teams that maybe could win a major if Astralis didn't exist. But Astralis is still the, obviously the massive heavy favorites to win majors. But like if they weren't around then, you know, Navi on a good day. Uh, G2 on a good day, Vitality, like all three of those would be interchanging first, second, third place pretty often probably, but it's kind of crazy how Astralis have managed to just get a stranglehold on that first place position. Uh, I like this spot by Nico actually. Uh, he's super low in health, so he doesn't want to take a fair gunfight. He wants to kill a guy with his back turned, right? Like now it's a 3v1, they're going to win the round anyways, but he came out here because he's in such low health. He wants to take an easy gunfight, right? Like CTs, even if they check towards T spawn, they're not going to check it like they would when they're clearing angles coming into a bomb site or something. A CT would just kind of run by there full speed and just be like, okay, nobody's there sort of thing. Um, anyways, it's a, it's a good spot to hold when you're low HP. Pissed around, second half. And that is actually the flashbang I want to slow down. Check out how fast he turns from this flashbang. It does not make any noise, and he just sees it coming. You're like, yeah, he probably suspected it, but that flash was flying in super fast. I'm going to show it again here at full speed. And, uh, like, I don't get it. I'm terrible at that, maybe. I don't understand how he turns from these things so fast, and then he turns back instantly, and he's ready to go immediately. It's just really, really impressive. So they lose pistol round and here they are with a force buy and you can see they're taking long. Nico throws two flashes to try and grab control along. They get a kill actually. Then they make this weird decision to kind of fall back but not really and Hunter's left hanging out to dry by his team by the way. They probably should have had better position. Then they just sit here halfway down long, halfway up long. Like who? You're not going to win gunfights from here that is for sure. And I don't know. I don't know whose call that was but that's... They should have either pushed forward, get into the pit, or you or you fall back right to the site. Like the decision shouldn't be to just stay halfway down long. That that can't be right. I don't I don't know. This is another really good round by Nico. He plays long, right? So he's they're taking it with three guys at the beginning of the round, like most games on Dust 2. And again, there's a flashbangs flying, but he never gets blind. Dodges that one really nice. That one you could see the arc on it on the replay there. there so there, it was in the air for a while. And he, you can see he's got 10 bullets left, so he's like, let's get a little bit closer to cover so I can get a reload in. Perfect. He didn't want to sit on that box that he was at with only 10 bullets in case he got peaked by three guys, right? So moves back to cover so he can get that reload in. Gets two at long A before Astralis retreats. So 3v4 and Astralis splitting B here. This is actually a good read from Astralis, you know. A 3v4 and they've managed to isolate the one guy on B. Unfortunately for Astralis anyways, they can't get the clean pick on the guy in B. Kenny S gets a kill and then they're left in the 3v1 and I think Nico comes up with this kill too if I'm remembering this right. Yeah, he does. Pretty nice. Nice little tap. Even tapping a little bit with the M4. Nico and Goose here with Astralis hitting Cat on kind of like a half save or deagle round. And he gets a pop flash from his teammate and kind of wide swings. But honestly, I would have liked it if he stayed in Goose. With the teammate down by car, Goose is kind of an easy position to distract T's away from a little bit. But you'll see he gets the pop flash from his teammate. Astralis really, really isn't blind at all. And he swings out, gets the one pick. But I don't know. I don't know if there's a better way to play that. You can see with G2 saving here, they're really... Five man trying to crunch on mid here and Glaive is alone at mid but he does a really good job just creating space and not giving away that AK like this is a five man team G2 trying to crunch on just one guy mid but Glaive is pretty elusive and he gets a kill out of it and gets out of there alive and it seemed like a really nice way to handle that. You can see Glaive has been in that position before that's for sure. Nico gets the kill here gets the knife actually but uh, it was all set up by Amanek. That was really nice teamwork between Nico and Amanek to basically give Nico that free kill. It's a great bait setup, which uh, 
is pretty much what you want to do. Even if Nico tried to USP him, he probably would have lost the fight. Honestly, if Nico would have tried to swing out while uh, Amanek was getting shot, he probably would have lost the fight. Really, going for the knife was the right decision there. All right, almost the end of the game. 15 to 12 for G2. And Nico and friends have this A split to defend against from Astralis. You can tell by the nades that came in, uh, the two mollies were both from long. So they know that there's at least two long and obviously they suspect the, the A split. They're going to choose to take control of Cat. And this is one way to defend against the split, right? If you can hold your footing on Cat, you just then, you know, now it's not a split anymore. Now it's four guys coming from long. And Kenny has kind of a similar smoke to what Simple had in my demo review. Just throwing the smoke down and then you just strafe side to side to try and get kills. Uh, doesn't work out for him as well as it did for Simple, but he tried. Astralis goes on to bring the game right to the 30th round, of course, because they refuse to die. I guess that's that uh, championship mentality from them. But G2, they have a great game here. Uh, they're going to close it out in this round. Nico... Doesn't do much. He gets a kill here, rotating over to cover for Hunter. Hunter's his cousin. Did I mention that? So he's actually playing with his cousin. And I think he has another cousin that just turned pro as well. I don't know what they're feeding these kids, but... Uh, Hunter's very good as well, and he's younger than Nico. I think Nico is 23 or 24, I think. Um, which is weird because he's been in the scene for so long, but he came up super young. And uh, he's obviously stuck around and been a superstar for every team that he's played on. Uh, started on Mouse Sports. That was really his first break. Playing with God B. And uh, then moved on to FaZe after Mouse Sports. And now on to G2. So he had a pretty good run on FaZe too. Like they were, a, they were a top team for a while. Like a top three team for I think at least a year. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the demo review. If you did, leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel further, check out my Patreon. You can see videos up to one week early. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for me, guys. Have a good one. See ya.